Good morning, all. Good morning. How are we doing? Doing well. How about yourself, Charles? It's Friday, darling. We're great. <laughs> How can you not be great on Friday? This is so true. <laughs> this is so true. You know, I got I got two whole days to myself, right? All right. Lucky you. Just just hanging out here, you know, with Maria and you know, doing doing what we do, which is, you know, in a lot of ways, it's probably not like real exciting stuff, but it's great. Yeah, you know, like they say, whatever makes your boat float. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I got, a, I got a new toy to show you guys today. All right. So here, I'll, I'll hold it up. See, it's this little thing right here. And what it is, is an electric pencil sharpener. No. Oh. Hmm. Now, I've, I've got several of these, okay? But this one is kind of ergonomic, you know, and it fits in your hand really nicely. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it makes it really kind of easy to draw with and to handle. And, um, you know, battery operated, you know, and it's, it's, it's a very cool little thing, so. Yeah, I just I just got that from Amazon uh, about a week ago or so. But uh, you know, I I had tried a couple of them. This is this is an older one that I had, and it's kind of like a pencil, and it and it's kind of designed to hold like a pencil as well, right? And it makes it less, you know, kind of it, it's not as easy to draw with, really. So, you know, this is kind of awkward because it's so long. This one really fits in your hand. And so it's like working with like a short pencil. So I kind of like that. So now is everybody, let's see, what do we got? We got 10 people on so far. Uh, I sent out a link this morning. Um, so hopefully everybody got that. And uh, Linda? Let's unmute Linda. Well, let's just unmute everybody for right now. Okay, come on, unmute all of you. All right, Linda, can you hear me? Betty. She's still muted. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm trying to unmute her and I can't I can't get her unmuted. And and her video. I can't do either. Okay. Come on, Linda. Let's unmute you. Well she keeps moving around. Anyway, okay. Uh so so my question is I sent out an email less than ten minutes ago. Did everybody get that? And uh, yeah. uh -huh. all right, good. Because uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that every day, and send out uh, uh, send out you know the link in the morning. That way, you've got both of the links on that email that day. Because um, for whatever reason, you know, people still have trouble connecting. You know, with that thing that they send out on a weekly basis, you know, from the county. And so just as a backup, okay? Anyhow, so guess what? It's Friday. Yes. We've got some exciting stuff to share with you, okay? And it's all about drawing, okay? And uh, the thing I'm gonna share first is I'm gonna close a few windows here so I can navigate a little bit better. Um, I want to begin to show you uh, some drawings uh, from a gentleman, and he was a very young man, uh, you know, compared to any of us. I mean, he's probably in his maybe mid to later 30s at this point, okay? And his name is Casey Bow, right? And, uh, you know, Casey is uh, quite a good artist. Um, and works with some really, really interesting techniques. 
Uh, and in fact, I've got a couple of videos I'm going to show you uh, that sort of use those techniques, um, both by him and other artists, you know, using that process. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to start off with uh, just some of his drawings. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see, this is a drawing, but does it look like a drawing? No. What, what is it about it that doesn't look like a drawing? It just looks like a... It kind of looks like a watercolor in a way. It's got a, the looseness to it, the, the flow of the background and the, the lower part of the, the dress. I, th I guess it's the dress that she's wearing. Mm -hmm. It just looks very, very loose. Yeah. And it looks, it looks three-dimensional. It does. It looks like it's supposed to be in water or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, there's this liquidy sort of feel to it, right? Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad we all can agree on that. All right. Love so it. I'm going to run you just through a couple of his drawings, and I just want you to know... Never mind. This, uh, you know, sort of the look of the technique that he's using and how effective it is at you know really bringing out sort of the features of the face so when you look at this face you know there's very little texture on it it's, it's very smooth very modeled and yet you get to the outside you know into the background and you get this again you know it looks very wet right Okay. Yep. And this is very consistent in a lot of his work. And you'll soon discover why. <laughs> I let the cat quite out of the bag. Now, um, this is a recognizable face to me. Uh, this is another artist by the name of Richard Schmid. And this is Casey's uh, life drawing of Richard. And uh, and they know each other and they've, they've worked together in the past. Okay. But again, you know, a really striking technique, you know, nice, mm -hmm. really kind of loose. And yet at the same time, when it comes down to the face or, you know, whatever the subject is, proportions and everything are very accurate. It's almost, Painterly, I would say. You know, I have a picture of my mother, a photograph, mm -hmm. and the technique of the photograph and this artwork from <laughs> are, are, to me look very similar. You know, like from the early, <laughs> I don't know, from the 1800s. Um, okay. So, so you're picking up a lot of the, the kind of granular feel in the photograph? Right, uh. right. The same type, but it's not as watery like the neck part, but the, the facial features in it. Okay. To me. Yeah. They are beautiful though, holy moly. Yeah. They're disgustingly beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah they're That's the truth. Yeah. Why, why do I paint that? Right. I mean, hello. Well, now. Here's the thing. Look at the tools. Yeah. Just using charcoal pencils, a stump, a kneaded eraser. Okay. You know, so there's not there's nothing particularly magic, you know, that he's doing. Okay. Now there's one thing that's missing on that page. And it really well, there's two things that are missing, you know, right there in that photograph that really make all the difference in the world. And you're going to find out what those are in just a minute. But I'm going to keep you in suspense for a while. What gets me is why he uses the, why he gets like the, the bubble effect. Why, I mean, how in the world would he get all those? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Will alcohol do that or, or well, water? You're going to, yeah, you're going to have to wait. Okay. Because oh. I'm going to play a video for you and, and that might okay. give Help. you some explanation. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, but, Charles, what is he drawing on? Well, yeah, now that's kind of an interesting question too, because uh, 
one of the things that's really going to affect the quality of your drawing is the quality of the paper that you're drawing on, okay? If you're, mm -hmm. if you're using just regular old kind of thin flimsy bond paper out of your sketch pad, uh, you're probably not gonna be able to get that effect, right? Because, and particularly uh, with charcoal, you know, you're working and reworking and, you know, going in and out of areas and, and scrubbing at it, and putting on and taking away. And uh, like normal, you know, paper out of your sketchbook generally won't hold up to that. Okay. Uh, so he's, he's using definitely a better quality paper. And in fact, uh, my guess is that he's using what they call Strathmore Bristol board. Okay. And uh, Bristol board comes in different finishes. You know, you can get it with a very toothy, rough finish, or you can get it with, you know, an mm -hmm. almost absolutely smooth uh, finish. But he's probably using the one in between that they call plate, P-L-A-T-E. And so what that is, it's a very smooth paper, but it's got, you know, it's, it's still soft, right? It's not like a, you know, like a hot press, a uh, piece of paper that's that's you know uh, got a very hard surface on it. So with hot press, you know you can use things like ink, and it it keeps a very sharp, very precise line. Uh, with the plate, you know if you did that same thing with ink, the ink would blur just a little bit at the edge. It would spread into the fi fiber of the paper, right? And then with the rough, it would really you know, break up break that up. line, okay? But he's probably a, uh, a plate finish, um, Bristol board, if I, I have, have a question. Pardon? Is a hot press uh, more what, porous uh, than a cold press? No, no, cold press is more porous. Cold okay? press it. Yeah, yeah, cold press is the one that's got more tooth and texture to it. Okay. And, and then a hot press is you know, can be in different papers almost slick. Okay. So, uh, right. So if you're if you're trying to use a some kind of media on a hot press, and you're using a brush or something like that, uh, the media is not going to soak into it immediately, and it's going to slide around on top of it. Okay. With a cold press, it's going to seep into it very quickly. Yeah, Wanda. Um, well, people who use uh, watercolors, mm -hmm. the paper that the paper that they use, would this be able to this technique? Could that be used on that also? Well, different people use different surfaces for oh. watercolor as well. Okay. And watercolor comes in a pretty wide variety of finishes. Okay. Again, you can get watercolor papers that are very smooth that really don't show like a lot of tooth. And then you can get those that, you know, it, it's very rough, okay? Oh, okay. And, and so it depends, again, on the grade of watercolor paper that you use. Mm -hmm. and, and in a lot of ways, the selection of paper that you're going to draw on or that you're going to use watercolors or even if you paint, uh, because there are people who use like acrylics and things on, you know, uh, paper-based substrates. Uh, that's in a lot of ways going to drive the look of the final piece. You know, as okay. to whether you're going to be able to get sharp, precise edges, or whether it's going to be looser, and you know, you're going to have more texture. You know, in the piece itself, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah. For some of it looks like it was sprayed on here, like something was sprayed there. Yes, it was. Okay. All oh. right. So, uh, all right. So I'm going to stop sharing that. We're going to get out of the video. Oh. And uh, that's oh, one more thing I'm going to get off the desktop. Yay! So we have a little more room. So, oh, most, most everybody showed up. We got about 19 of you. All right. So now, here comes the fun part. 
Let's go. Oh, okay. Here. I'm going to tease you a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> this is an online page. And, uh, and everybody can see these drawings, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm kind of scrolling down. Again, same artist. This is uh, Casey Bow. And these are from some of his uh, demos that he's done. And he does a lot of demos. He's, he's made quite a name for himself uh, from doing uh, workshops. Uh, primarily, what he focuses on is a lot like Richard Schmidt doing what we call a la print painting, right? But his, his drawing uh, workshops are, you know, really fun and kind of fascinating. And again, you know, he's translated that sort of direct a la prima <clears throat> feel from, from the paint into his drawings as well. So there's a, there's a real consistent look, you know, to, uh, to his work. When you see it, you know, it's, it's, you know, fairly recognizable and you can pretty much so guess exactly who did that. Okay. So we'll stop sharing that. And again, another window yet I can close. All right. So, uh, so I'm going to do a video here. Come on. And this is going to kind of get into uh, a little bit of the technique, All right? No, no. Pardon? Hello. Somebody got something to say? Okay. Everybody see see that? So what do you see going on there? Ah, uh -huh. yes. Wow, that's amazing.
there is a hmm. fundraising Sorry. deadline coming we got up an ad. for Senate Democrats. It's you too. They need your help right now if they're going. Are we supposed to be looking at a purple screen? Purple? No. That's all I see is a purple screen. You don't see the video? I see the video. No. I see the video. Maybe I see the video. Yes, it's amazing. I see the video. Huh. It's really something. Okay, I think, I, I think I'm seeing Daddy O's. Daddy O, are you purple? <laughs> yeah, that's Daddy O. Daddy O is purple. Okay. That's all I see. Really? Yeah. Don't take it off. Oh gosh, here's yeah. another. Yeah. Hey, am I a celebrity now? Yeah. 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 Okay. So here, I'll tell you what. Let me just stop. Let me just stop. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Okay, well. Okay. All right. He so, uses smudges for the yeah. planes of the face, and then he, he never uses a pencil or charcoal drawing of it at all. It's no. Amazing. Right. Now. Wow. And 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 now that we we're going to take a little intermission here, we're going to talk about this. All right. So, what was the first thing that you saw him using? What is that thing? It looked like a blotter or something. Just right. a blotter. Okay. Pouncer. All right. So everybody has these around their house. Okay. Somewhere deep within a drawer, probably in your bedroom, you have a pair of old socks. Oh, oh that was a sock. Oh, okay. And what what they did is they took the soft, like foam sponge, stuffed it down into a bottom of a sock, right? Yeah. And they're, they're using that sock and they're dipping it in uh, graphite 
powder or charcoal powder and they're taking and they're beginning to just do their layout you know with just kind of soft forms and shapes right and that begins and see that's what i'm talking about when i talk about building the underlying structure see that's what i'm saying you know they're not going in there with a pencil and making that first mark or edge they're, they're starting with something very soft and just kind of, okay, it's gonna be a little darker here. It's gonna be not quite so dark there. And they're laying in, you know, just some rough shapes, right? It's very abstract in the very beginning. And it looks like, you know what it looks like to me is, is an old, like a makeup brush that you, with the, you know, that's there, it's a, they're about an inch, inch and a half long mm -hmm. with the very uh, soft, and, and you could dip that in it and, and smudge with that, I guess. You It'd can. The yeah, you can. And, and here's the thing. A, a lot of us, you know, when we start drawing, you know, we start with a, a pencil, you know, with right. Pencil, right? Well, a pencil. We right. start making marks, right? Mm -hmm. And my suggestion to you is rather than do that, you could start with a brush, you could start with a sponge, you could start with a sock. And if you had some loose charcoal powder or graphite powder, it, it can get a little bit messy, okay? But you start off even with a paper towel, right? And you dip it in that powder, and then you use that to start, you know, just kind of placing the elements in your drawing very loosely and a kneaded eraser to pull out the lights. See, you can begin to build sort of an underlying structure that's kind of soft, right? And as you build that up, then you begin to use tools that have sharper edges. Like, and you, as you pointed out, he never used a stick of charcoal or anything other than he used one of those paper, what they call a stump, right? And again, you know, he's still dipping it in that, you know, charcoal powder or graphite, whatever he's using. And, he, and he's you know, using it to apply that little bit of graphite and blend it and control it, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna go back to the video and we're gonna watch the finish of it, okay? okay. But okay. yeah, this, this was a good, a good time to take a break and talk about that a little bit. Okay, so John, can you see this? Now I do, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I was hoping so. All right. Yes. So, uh, all right, so we're going to continue on with this. So you see he's using the stump and kneaded eraser. He's just building it up very kind of carefully and very slowly.
you go. So does this scene look familiar to you? How about this? Have you All right. So what did you guys think of that? Great. Amazing. Amazing. Very interesting. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes. Charles, yeah. I know that they speed that film up, but how fast was it sped up? Because nobody, we couldn't draw that fast and make it look that beautiful. So I don't know, how, is he taking deliberate strokes or is he just kind of like moving right through it? Oh, no, it's, it's all very deliberate. So what, what you saw there was probably a drawing that was done over two or three hours. Okay. Into less than 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the thing I want you to notice is you <laughs> never draw a charcoal pencil ever, did you? No. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, and, and so here's the thing, you know, I mean, you can use those like graphite pencils, charcoal pencils and things, but again, it's that idea of you want to start off, you know, kind of very soft. And again, the word is abstract. You're, you know, you're not rushing to get the eyeballs in there. Okay. That's not the goal. The goal is to get the underlying structure, the composition, you know, set up those values, right? right. And then build them up, you know, build them up layer by layer, slowly. Um, and as you develop them, it's like the drawing kind of emerges. You know, it just kind of comes out uh, of that, right? So keep that in mind, you know, as you're doing your drawings. You know, most of us, okay, and I throw myself in that category as well, right, uh, are in way too big of a hurry to get to something that's resolved, right? And... And, you know, I'm going to show you this next video. And this is a rather long video, but it's beautiful. And, and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy it. This is a different artist. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, all in French. Okay. For those of you who speak French. Uh, but it has English subtitles. So you can read what's going on. Okay. Uh, but again, I want you to look at you know, this artist approach. And, and this is a drawing technique. This is not painting. This is drawing, okay? And he draws at such a large scale, right? So, uh, you know, hold on to your seats and get a cup of coffee, you know. If you eat pastries, you know, go get one of those, though I don't really recommend them, okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta get my coffee. Okay. Let us know. Give me a second. It's it's almost finished. <laughs> Second's gone. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Okay. Wouldn't want you to miss out on anything here. Okay. Emotionism. inspire toujours des textures que le pigment a créées sur ma toile avant de commencer à peindre. Pour moi, dans cette texture organique, il y a déjà une âme, une émotion, une fragilité, 
J'aime croire qu'il y a des personnages, son histoire. Il faut juste que j'aille le chercher. Mais tout est déjà dans la toile. Is that a canvas? Yes. That's amazing. He just threw that on the box, right? Uh-huh. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. but rather to portray the reality of an emotion. I want to illustrate the essence of my subject and bring the view. That's the reason why I identify my art as visual emotionism. This is oil paint, and what he's doing is, you know, he's mixing up uh, a color, and he's throwing some graphite in there as well. And he thinned it down with like a turpenoid. Yeah, that's what kills me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
25, okay. And how long how, how long will it take you to get to it? Hello? Hello? How about that? Is that better? Yeah. Whoever is on the call, can you mute yourself? Okay. La dernière étape de ma création, c'est l'accident. C'est une série de tâches que je fais, que je ne veux pas vraiment contrôler. En fait, que je ne veux pas contrôler. C'est la dernière chose que je fais parce que je veux que les tâches restent en premier plan. Là, pour effet de plonger le personnage au fond de la toile, c'est là où l'émotion et la fragilité prend tout son sens. C'est là que la toile prend vie. Le personnage et son histoire aussi. Et... Je dirais que c'est à partir de ce moment-là que la toile m'appartient. Ça me dérange pas vraiment de me défaire de mes tableaux. Pour moi, la création, ça doit toujours être en mouvement. J'aime vraiment penser qu'il y a des gens qui vont être touchés par ce que je fais, qui vont se procurer une toile, qui vont vivre avec une partie de moi chez eux. Pour moi, commencer une nouvelle collection, c'est pas comme si je repartais à zéro. Je vais juste continuer. pictures on the floor there's a blue sky on the sea lost images of a man inside a daydream there's a blackboard on the wall there's a flag I'll never see got a vision of a land inside of me Real faces, dream to places, things I thought I'd never see. Okay. What'd you guys think of that? Like a bottle. Well, I, I kind of thought it was a. So he has to be so confident in his stroke, in his, in his, that when that brush is in his hand. Mm -hmm. to be so aggressive at, at, I mean it looked like he was attacking the canvas in many many areas he was yeah, yeah it, it was a very kind of physical approach to painting you know and a lot of that I think comes from the scale that he's working at um, it, it, it helps to have you know a fairly large space that you can work on something like that and then back away you know, to see what the visual effect is. 
you know, if you're if you're working in a small studio space, you know, you're probably not going to be able to, you know, get quite the same effect. But, um, That's the fascinating thing about that is that he threw that on there, mm -hmm. and he made something out of that. Right. Yeah. That was really fascinating. Well, you know, it's that. it's kind of um, it was Michelangelo, right, who had that uh, that approach to sculpture. You know, Michelangelo said, the sculpture is already there in the block of stone. All you have to do is move the excess stone and the sculpture will emerge. Mm. And that was, that was a great way of, sorry about that. That was a great way of describing, you know, the process of sculpting, you know. Um, you know, a lot of sculptors who work with clay or wax or things, you know, it's an additive process. But with, you know, Michelangelo working in stone, you know, it was a subtractive process. He was cutting away, taking away what he didn't need, right? Charles, and, I did not understand. Pardon? I'm sorry, go ahead. I did not understand how he was able to apply graphite on the canvas and then go over it with a liquid, the diluted uh, oil paint without removing the graphite. Right, well, uh, yeah. And I, I, I think the answer to that was at some point, and they, he didn't show that, he went in and put some kind of fixative or sealer on that to stop the graphite, you know, from, you know, uh, you know melding away into the oil paint. Mm. Yeah, I did. I did see a glimpse of a can, a spray can, there in one of the one of the shots there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw he doesn't that. want to tell all his secrets. Yeah, he doesn't want to tell all his secrets. What I was concerned about, Charles, he used a lot of that graphite and and used his hands and put sprayed it in his uh, painting room. What's the danger of all of that? Uh, was over a long period of time, uh, he was using charcoal, not mm -hmm. graphite. And, okay, the charcoal, okay. Yeah, and charcoal is inert. You know, it's it's not toxic. In okay. fact, you can eat all the charcoal you want, and it will never harm you. Okay. Uh, in fact, some people say it's really good for your digestion. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do that with graphite. Okay, but charcoal you can do that. And he was using um, what you call powdered charcoal, and you can actually, you know order it online, you can go to like Michael's and things like that. And occasionally you'll see, you know, a container and it's all just, you know, charcoal powder. And, uh, you know, a lot of artists, you know, are beginning to work with that, you know, uh, rather than just the charcoal pencils. And, you know, it's, you know, it's a different way of working. It's, uh, it's a very messy process though, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're one of these people who want your living environment or working environment, environment very pristine and, you know, nothing messy about it, this is probably not the approach for you, okay? Um, you know, I remember, I remember that during the summertime when we're finished using the big bag of charcoal, mm -hmm. and we're emptying it out, and at the very bottom you have at least uh, two cups Ooh, of right. ground up powdered charcoal. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's a great effective you know medium to use, rather than just using sticks. And in fact, you know if 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 you have a lot of like vine charcoal around or compressed charcoal, you know you can take uh, sandpaper, and just rub it on the sandpaper and make you know that powder. You know and put it in a container so you've got some of that you know to use right. So you don't have to go out and buy a big jar of it. And if you if you do a fair amount of drawing, it's not going to take you very long, you know, to build up a little container of it, you know, that you can keep around. And you know, you can use all kinds of tools. Uh, I think Jean had mentioned maybe using like a makeup brush, right? You know, if it's a very soft brush, it would be a great way to you know get some of the medium down on the paper. You can use watercolor brushes that are very soft. You can use Q-tips, cotton swab, an old sock, you know, even, um, even like really soft 
sponges, you know, that you can, you know, just dab into, you know, the graphite or the charcoal and then apply. So there's, there's lots of different ways that you could approach, you know, uh, laying out and blocking in your drawing that doesn't have anything to do with, you know, picking up, you know, this tool right here and making a bunch of scratchy marks, you know, on the paper, paper right? So you've got options, you know, there's lots of different ways, right? And, you know, um, in Casey Bow's um, approach, he starts off again, you know, with those tools laying in that very soft, you know, background. And at various points uh, in the drawing, you know, he'll come back in, you know, he may get it to a certain degree and he'll take a spray bottle and he'll either use like uh, odorless uh, terpenoid or he'll use uh, acetone. Now I've mentioned acetone a couple of times and a lot of, a lot of professional artists will use acetone. It has a slightly different effect than the, uh, the terpenoid. Uh, and the great thing about acetone is that about the time that you spray it on, it evaporates. It's a lot like alcohol. It just evaporates very, very quickly. Uh, the problem with acetone is that it, you know, it can be very toxic if you're working in an enclosed environment without good ventilation, right? So you want to be very careful with that. But it, it's, um, you know, the advantage of it is that you can put it on, it's liquid for just a little while, and then it sets up and dries very quickly, right? And um, the, the other nice thing about acetone versus the terpenoid, which dries very slow, slowly, is that with the acetone, when it does dry, you can come back in with a kneaded eraser or things and still lift out areas from it. With the terpenoid, it tends to kind of fix it a little bit so that you know, you can never really get it all the way back out to white again. Um, that's been kind of my experience with using the two of those uh, mediums. But uh, again, if you work more slowly, then the terpenoid might work for you. If you want to work more quickly, then you, uh, and you don't, and you're not a very patient person, you want to keep moving on it, then the acetone might work better, okay? Um, another alternative to that is you could try water, okay? Uh, you, you can use water, you can use, uh, you know, things like alcohol, like regular rubbing alcohol. And again, they, they have slightly different effects with those mediums. Um, but, you know, in a spray bottle, if you just kind of sprayed it on lightly and then, you know, you can move it around, uh, you, you can get some you know, really beautiful kind of organic effects, you know, with either graphite and or charcoal. Now, as an alternative and probably safer than uh, using acetone, alcohol, or any of those mediums, you can also uh, buy what they call water-soluble graphite. And uh, we used that quite a bit at the Benson Center. And I love that stuff. I had never used it until maybe two or three years ago. And, uh, you know, I found it at Binders. And uh, I bought a bunch of it. And we started using it in the classes, you know, at Benson. And it's a wonderful media to work with. It really is. Uh, and the thing is, it's, uh, it's graphite, so it's not toxic, and it's water-soluble. So you, you, know, you can lay it down as a powder, you can lay it down as marks or whatever, work back into it with a brush with water, uh, either work with it flat or even if you work with it elevated and let it kind of run and drip and bleed. You, you can get some you know, really beautiful effects with that. And so... You know, I think personally, you know, that's a safer medium to work with. Uh, and you may not get the exact same effect, but you can get pretty close, right? 
Uh, you know, just water in a spray bottle. You can spray it on some of these areas if it's, I would probably keep it flat and just let it kind of, you know, dissolve some of the graphite. And like I said, I, I think you'll get, you know, very similar effects with it, okay? Anybody got any questions, any comments? What I thought was interesting, you know, uh, on the last one there, he said he, he throws the powder on, then he studies it to see what he's going to do with it. Uh -huh. But from all the background, it looks like it comes up with a face. So he's looking for an inspiration for a face. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what he does, you know, is, is he paints these big faces. Um, and that's what he was talking about. You know, he puts that uh, charcoal powder down and it kind of scatters it. And then he begins to look, you know, and you saw him kind of take the sketch pad and just right. look at sort of the abstract pattern and then begin to figure out how, you know, with what he has there, you know, how he can position that face in there, you know. So it, it's kind of like looking at clouds, right? right. How many things can you see in clouds, right? Um, same approach, you know, he's got this pattern down there and it's like, okay, so what can I really make that into? And so it, you know, it's like part of his creative process, you know. And, you know, he's when not he doing, um, you know, like photographically accurate faces and things like that. Again, you know, it's, it's sort of more of, he's trying to bring out an emotional response, you know, to, to the image. Um, you know, just a different way of approaching it. You know, there's there's artists out there and as many artists as you can find out there, you're gonna find, you know, a whole variety of approaches. And, you know, that's just his, okay? Another thing I, I thought was interesting when he, toward the end when he just splashed and uh, paint on, mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, he said the effect he achieved was to bring the face to the background. Right. Yeah, yeah. So he was putting something in in between the viewer and the face. So it was like he was creating an element of distance in there, and and so the face was kind of moving back, and so you saw the elements, you know, closer to you. So you were looking through something, and um, you know, again, you know, it's it's, you know, that's that's kind of his approach and his idea. You don't have to do things like that. Uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I would take paint and start, you know, laying on top of it and kind of feel like I've ruined the paint, you know? Because <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. That didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. You it know? looked as though when he was stapling, he uh -huh. was, when he was stapling this thing down, it looked right. like it was being a terry cloth or something. It's canvas. Okay, and what what type, what kind was that? Because it looked like it was very, like, brushed up. Well, it was, yeah, it was kind of a thick, uh, coarse canvas that he was using. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like a real fine or medium weight canvas. It was a very heavyweight canvas that had been primed. Um, you know, almost like sailcloth. And then he was stretching it, and it probably, was something like sailcloth because it's it's probably cheaper than artist canvas, uh, you know. And he and he was buying it in these big bolts, you know. Mm -hmm. Notice when he rolled it out on the floor, and so uh, you know he was getting it in like you know probably forty to forty-eight inch wide uh, rolls. You know. Now you can buy canvas. Um, Geez, you can get canvas almost at almost any dimension you want, really. Um, you know, up to 20 or 30 feet. Uh, you know, the problem is, you know, when when you're in a small space, how do you work with something like that? <laughs> you know, if you got this big bolt, you know, you don't even have, like in my studio, I wouldn't even have enough floor space to roll it out, you know, to be able to cut it into smaller pieces, so. So, you know, working in an old warehouse, something like that, you can work, you know, things that kind of dimension, but, you know, for, for our purposes, you know, most of us at home, you know, that's not going to work, you know, 
but you can still buy, you know, um, if, if you're, let's say that you're a person who wants to work on like a linen surface, right? Well, you can go out and buy these individually stretched linen canvases and that's fine. But let's say that you want to work on a harder surface. Well, you can go get sheets of masonite or wood and then you can actually adhere that linen, you know, to those wood panels and make your own, you know, your own panels to paint on. And uh, I tend to do that quite a bit. So when I buy linen, you know, I'll go out and I'll buy a roll, you know, a bolt of linen. And, um, you know, I'll, you know, attach that to the wooden surface. Use and what I normally use is I use that acrylic gel medium. And that actually acts like a glue and it glues it down to that surface. And then I'll prime it if I want it to be primed or I'll just use the gel medium over it to seal it. And then I'll paint on that. Okay. You what, get what was, yeah, what was the name of the first artist that you, you showed? What was his name again? Casey Bow, B-A-U-G-H. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, look, time to go to lunch. Okay. We'll be back here this afternoon, uh, two o'clock. If you guys have some drawings or anything, please send them in. Uh, I've got some stuff, but, uh, you know, we could use more. So shoot me an email, send me some images. You too, Richard <laughs> and Veronica, send me some stuff. Okay. Anyway, okay. It was good seeing Thank you. Have a good Happy lunch, morning. everybody. Goodbye. Okay, enjoy. Bye. Yeah, we'll Bye. see you this afternoon at two, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.